Yo, what the fuck is up? It's the heaviest podcast, weekly worship at the altar of motherfucking radness. We are back. We have been, we've been joined, rejoined? No, we've been, <laughs> I, I can't even think of the word, Gary. What is it? Reunited? That's Reunited probably... and it feels so good. <laughs> Gary, I'll be honest, mate. The riffs haven't been the same without you. No, nah, man. Agreed. Agreed. They just don't just... hit the same without my boy. They don't hit the same, brother. I've been I've been spiraling. I've basically listened to the the last Ulcerate album sort of nonstop. I haven't really known <laughs> what else to listen to outside of that. It's been there's been riffs coming left and right, but they just haven't felt the same. It's good to have you back, mate. It's good to fucking have you back. Oh, thanks, man. It's nice to be back. I uh, I had a fucking incredible holiday, but I tell you what, it was knackering fuck me <laughs> it was exhausting dude like i did so much so much walking so much like train riding all over the fucking place like we so much fucking, bullet action yeah man got on that shinkansen a lot of times uh we crammed a lot of a lot of shit into our two weeks so of course it was it was exhausting but you know you know how like when you're going to city break you go away for like two, three days on a city break and it's it's knackering. I basically went on four city breaks in a row essentially. So it was <laughs> it was pretty it was pretty hard going, but I had a fucking incredible time. It's an absolutely amazing country, Japan. It was so cool. Nice man. I'm fucking stoked for you. Um I would be like, what's the best bit? But it's probably loads of bits. What what's the what's what tales have you got to regale us of? There um, must have been some hijinks, some Japanese tales? hijinks. Japanese hijinks. Um yeah, I guess so. I went to a I went to a gig, that was fun. It was an interesting yeah. thing to do while you're on holiday. I went to see yeah. Blind Equation while they were playing in Osaka, which was Fantastic. very cool. Fantastic. It was very cool. There was it was interesting. The venue was really cool, but like obviously there's not a great deal of room for buildings in in japan so it was all on like split levels so like you came in and there was like a level of like of hanging out then there was another level where the actual gig was and then there was another level where the bar was like the venue was kind of kind of strange the way it was laid out but it was it was really cool like in japan people mosh like we used to when we were like kids you know like the push mosh rather than like nice like nice space push pits. yeah they rather than like let's make a space and let someone like try and kick me in the head no it was like proper like pushing around and you know there was like a geezer who stood behind me who clearly like just come from work in his full suit and there was a girl in her school uniform who was there with her dad like watching it was just it was a really interesting different experience to go to a gig <laughs> in another country and i loved it and blind equation were f- were fucking great they were absolutely crushed it they were really really good um people were going off people were having a great time because a lot of their music obviously they're like a cyber grind band but they do have like these big kind of dancey moments in quite a lot of their songs as well so yeah it was loads of fun um saw fucking loads of shrines and temples like absolutely loads of shrines and temples nice the coolest one i saw we went to kyoto and there's this place called fushimi inari where you know the like the Tory gates, you're aware of aware of the gates that are like the little gates. Yeah, yeah the little like, like spirit three, gate figures. Yeah, yeah. So there's this place, this Fushimi and Ari, they have like they call it the thousand the thousand Tories. And it's just like a like a essentially a tunnel just made up of these and they're like bright orange with like Japanese lettering written down them and stuff and that was really cool and we spent ages trying to get a decent photo but there's so many other people <laughs> going around you've got to like really really pick your moment like i kept playing around <laughs> my phone's got like you know that like ai eraser to try. i was like if i could just try and like erase these people from this picture it'll look really good <laughs> so <laughs> that was fun um yeah it was just a really interesting different experience like the country's their country is so, so very, very different to ours. Like, I didn't see a single piece of litter the whole time I was there. Not, not really. One. No, no litter anywhere. No, <laughs> no graffiti on anything. Um, everyone was really, really respectful and friendly. Like, it was great on a sort of accessibility level with Nicola. It was absolutely fantastic. Like, the public transport. Basically That's really good to hear, man. Because I know that that was like a bit of a planning nightmare, and you know, it was you know, you didn't know if it was going to be and yeah. stuff. So that's so good to hear that you didn't have a fucking nightmare. No, I was nervous about that. Like, 
the flight, of course, was was the thing because we haven't been on a flight that long since Nicola's been like sort of full time in her wheelchair. So that was good. But they have this little like mini wheelchair that goes up and down the aisles for getting to the bathroom and stuff. And um, and yeah, like every train station was accessible. Some of them they they had this thing that was absolutely mad, right? So there was an escalator, but you they pressed the button. And like three steps just turned into a flat platform to put a wheelchair on. And then that rode down the escalator. Oh. That was really interesting. Like most, <laughs> cool. most stations had lifts. And so we could just use the, use the elevators. And, you know, everyone was always like, oh, what do you want to, the elevators over this way? And like being really, really helpful. And the only issue we really had was like when we went out for dinner, a lot of the places you eat are like, you sit around. Oh yeah, you're like on the bar. You're like you've got about a you got yeah, you got fuck like all a, space. It's like a narrow <laughs> corridor, and everyone sits like in a row around. Push past around like the, eighteen people to get yeah. to like a little tiny well, bench that's like. Well, it's not even. It was not even a lot of them. Like they have, you know, like the the sort of the hot plate and all of the seatings all around the edges of the the sort of barry hot plate kitchen area, which doesn't really work for us because Nick can't sit on one of the, those higher chairs. So. Having right. finding places to eat was a little bit tricky, but other than that, like it's not like I went hungry and I ate some fucking incredible meals. So, yeah, nice. I, I don't know, absolutely amazing. Do you like my hat as well? This is my uh, I was going to say Giants that, hat that I bought myself. Is that what that is? There. Yeah, they're banging nice. to their baseball in Japan. It's like the biggest sport. Absolutely love it. And um, like where we were staying in Tokyo was literally right next to the Tokyo Dome, which is where the uh, which is like the Giants' home ground. So. And also one day there was like like a J-pop thing going on and we walked past and there was just absolutely hordes of Japanese like girls and ladies all just queuing outside of this venue, like fucking thousands of people queuing to get into this venue. It was pretty mad. Um, uh, yeah, just, it was just really cool. I kept finding myself just enjoying like people watching because like Japanese <laughs> fashion is really cool. Like I wish I could pull off like dressing like, like, like people in Japan do like, like they all love to wear a lot like of big really, trousers. Really, yeah, really big baggy clothes, but like, and a lot of like monochrome color palettes. They, they, everyone just looks, everybody just dresses really cool in Japan. Like, <laughs> I was just like, like I did do, we did do quite a fair amount of shopping and we go into like, you know, go into the brand shops and find the section where they had like the stuff that's only available in Japan. And we you know, try and pick up a few bits. Like, Nick got herself a few little bits and pieces and, I just, yeah, it was, it's really hard to sort of sum it up really quickly because it was a, it was a crazy, crazy holiday, but I had a fucking sick time. How you been Amazing. getting on while I've been away? What have you been up to? You don't know, you, you good, did a very mate. good podcast. I'll tell you that much. I listened to that. That yeah, was lovely. Thank you. It was a great oh, time. I'm glad, to, I'm glad you enjoyed it, mate. I was a bit, I was a bit worried about doing a podcast without you and, uh, I, yeah, it turned, it went really well. So I was really happy with that. Um, and then since then. Uh, oh, I went to the I went to the Island of Wight uh, oh, last yeah. weekend. Oh, you went to the Pooh Museum. I saw on your Instagram story. <laughs> I went to the National Pooh Museum. Finally did it. Finally <laughs> went there. <laughs> Finally went there, man. Uh, and it was a laugh. It was like <laughs> it was what I don't know what, what to expect. You know what? What do you expect? Um, I definitely handled some some ancient turds. That's for sure. Uh, nice. All these weird little interactive thing is it's pretty small. I mean, actually, I probably didn't wash my hands because, but you know, it's more sort of like calcified. Well, not calcified. It was more like a fossil. It didn't really, It wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It was more like a fossilized turd. Um, there was loads, of, <laughs> loads of different poos there and stuff, and all these different like these little like interactive things where you like spin something around you gotta guess the poo of an animal and stuff and it was all it was so fucking funny i don't know what i expected but um i was i was glad we finally went there like me, me and gary went on a stag do there uh, about a year ago and we all went past and like sort of saw like a sign that we didn't know or definitely saw or didn't see it was like i think i just saw a sign that says national poo museum guys like i think we definitely need to check that out um couldn't convince <laughs> the the people to check it out so as we went over again recently You're like, uh, all right let's go down it's happening I was like, this that's time. it it's, it's happening my it dream only... reality um, we know, did get a, a lot of got a bit of merch <laughs> yeah <laughs> what did you get i got a tote i got a tote bag that says <laughs> national poo museum i've got, got this little finger turd oh look at him He's pretty great. I like yeah, him. He's, he's sort of a little, a little turn <laughs> man. Uh, you're supposed to like flick it on, so like sticks on stuff. It's, you know, 
That's pretty okay. cool. I've got, I've got a tote bag see... as well that says National Boom Museum. That's pretty. Can you see over my so... shoulder? I got. If I move, can you see my little mate. Oh, you got a little chainsaw thing. He's my he's my little pocketer from Chainsaw Man. In <laughs> they have like there's this company called Super Tato, and all over Japan they have these fucking enormous arcades. And like we'd always go in because I liked having a little me and Gareth, who we went away with. He loves a an arcade racing game, so we were always trying to find like like Daytona, you at Daytona racing or nice or like hit and run or a bit of mario kart maybe mario kart now the one we did like playing was called i think it's called like midnight run or something it was like a drifting game oh yeah played, i remember that been... a few times that was really fun i think i remember that was that on the dreamcast maybe yeah potentially it, this is like a sort of updated version of it I oh, think, i'm thinking but... of midnight club that's what i'm thinking midnight of. club yeah that's it that is what it was i mean it's a similar sort of thing but one yeah. of the things they do have is the ground floor is just you know like the sort of arcade soft toy grabber machines and Nick became like obsessed with them, but um, <laughs> I, I played for ages to win this little fella because I've been I was watching Chainsaw Man on Japanese Netflix and like whenever we were on like a train or whatever, I'd like catch watch a little episode. And he's really cute, <laughs> and I wanted to win him, and I couldn't win him in the end, but my brother-in-law won him because um, it's it so cute. He's got a fucking chainsaw hanging he's out got of a his chainsaw sweet. for a nose. But he's also <laughs> adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it was cool it was really cool um, ah brilliant what was um oh fuck I d- did you watch any mad like japanese tv was there like any like oh, crazy vid- was there like crazy game show stuff i watched well i didn't watch any game show well i watched one program which i think was like a japanese version of like um changing rooms or something but it was absolutely <laughs> mental and the tv like everything that goes on there's always like loads of writing on the screen. And there's also like a box <laughs> in the corner of like people reacting to stuff that's happening on the, on the program. And they I never, like, really as you understood. go, they've got like bubble goggle box, like yeah, on, kind on deck. Of. It'd, like, it'd be like a tiny little box just in the corner. And it'd just be like faces reacting to stuff. And it'd be different people. <laughs> I never really understood what was going on, why they were there. Cause I, I never caught enough of it to, to kind of figure out, you know, like maybe it was like, <laughs> like it was a part of the, of this morning the equivalent of this morning and that's the presenter i didn't i never really caught enough to understand that but all i know was very busy and i watched this weird kids program about um crossing the road and uh eating your blueberries or something i don't know it was fucking <laughs> mental <laughs> I, didn't watch, I didn't have a lot of time to sit right. and watch much tv but right it was guys crazy. we're going in for the big pitch meeting <laughs> gary have you got your you got your homework done we're going to sell this to network tv uh, <laughs> it was it I've was got this, fucking, i got this odd. riveted show about a lad who's going to cross the road <laughs> and eat some blueberries well, you couldn't put it's going to go into syndication. So I had no <laughs> idea what was happening. But like one of the things, we did like a food tour when we, were, uh, when we were in Osaka and the guy was American, but he'd lived in he'd lived in Japan for about 15 years and he was married to a Japanese lady. And he was saying about how like they let like kids as young as like three walk to school on their own. And like, because that's just how things are, are done. And it's such a safe place that there's not really anything you have to worry about. And he was saying that like a lot of these TV programs are kind of geared towards like helping kids understand how to kind of navigate around the world on their own. And oh, right. they kind of just go like, okay, so your school's over here. See you later. And then that's it forever. And the kids just walk to school on their own. So <laughs> it's very different, but it was, you know, like I say, it was one of the fucking safest places. I felt, I felt never felt like, in danger or in of any level no of danger of any kind the whole time like maybe that I might is have nice got to have no at danger. one point but that's probably the closest that it came and that was my <laughs> own fault for not waiting until the crossing man changed <laughs> well i'm glad you didn't feel like there was any sort of jeopardy <laughs> yeah, it's nice you don't want to go away to just have some danger so that's no. lovely yeah mate it was wicked um while i was away the riffs were absolutely off the hook right but the riffs this week are uh, just as off the hook if not maybe more there's some fucking mate we've got some incredibly <laughs> stupidly interesting records gary Dude. um i, I know that you've been i know you've been hard. chomping at the bit to do, to dive into this so let's fucking go man let's fucking yeah, go man i'm we're welcoming everybody to an episode of bands that we've been sleeping on with sunny and gary uh, <laughs> this week's episode is about Inter Armour. Um, their new album's called New Heaven, and it comes out on the 26th through Relapse. 
Um, so yeah, Interrail, man, a band I'd never really gone in on at all, and I'm pretty sure you hadn't either. And like when the single came out for this record, the first track, and everyone in the Discord was like chatting away about it, and I was like, oh, and they just like a stoner band, like, um, what's so exciting? <laughs> and then I chucked it on, and fuck me, I was absolutely floored. And then since then, like, we'll come back, obviously, we'll come back around to it, but since then, I've really fallen for the. Soul for English, which was their Soul album for English, before yeah. this one. And also the Sky Burial, which I think came out in 2013. That, that one's probably a bit more of the kind of in the the realm of what I thought Interama sounded like, which is just like doomy, stonery stuff, like sleep or whatever. But like, yeah, they're not, that's like 5% of what Interama do is that sort of doomy, stonery vibe. And everything else is just f- fucking incredible. And I have become i've developed a massive crush on this band as a result of this album and this album is fucking incredible it's like a fucking blockbuster movie man like it's basically (laughs) john wick crossed with avatar and we can pretty much stop the review there because everyone now knows what it's like (laughs) i've I've explained it really really well (laughs) that is john wick john wick crossed with avatar is fucking wild i love that (laughs) Uh, this is just like incredible this record and the first i really i just want to make a public service announcement please never ever 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 listen to this album out of order that would really upset me if you did that because this is so perfectly arranged and organized in its structure and there's a reason some things are done in certain orders like you wouldn't wipe your ass before you've had a shit would you that would be silly and listening (laughs) to the interarmor record out of order is basically like doing that so i just want to make sure right up front You've got to listen to this record in order because it is such like a, it's such a journey. It's so, like, oh, that's a bit of a cliche in it. Oh, it's, this album's such a journey. It's such but a it's, journey. But it's so, it's kind of built into like a three act structure, the record, isn't it? The way that it kind of yeah. happens. And if you try to listen to a track out of, out of sequence, you might accidentally ruin it. And I, I wouldn't want that for you. You've got to start at the beginning and listen to the whole thing every time. Yeah, this this thing is fantastic, mate. It it morphs. It it's it's like um, it's like a box of chocolates. F- fucking Forrest Gump would love this album, mate. <laughs> it's it's got so many flavors. I love how it just explodes from the first track. Is like that sort of fun house dissident mania. That that yeah. big big massive massive chunks of wonk straight up <laughs> it's there so wonky i've written and in it, my notes that it sounds like if imperial triumphant had joey jordison on drums and that first track <laughs> like it's 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 fucking wicked like you're absolutely right wonky as hell i love it how it sort of it sort of works it's motion upwards it's sort of the gears get enough sort of friction and traction to like really move and then it busts into the grooves and it's it's fantastic it's such a master class in like interesting dissonant wonk but yeah also just commanding riffery i i i love this thing man yeah i love the, so <laughs> the vocals like the opening track like has has the sort of this sort of bubbling vocal it sort of bubbles to the surface like some sort of sentient phlegm i like it's just so horrible and brilliant and then yeah. and then it you know it moves into like violet seizures where it's this sort of jangly arancy pazuzu almost sort of like like got like psyche vibes it's like dissonant psych and yeah it, it moves that different vocal delivery creeps in and it's like this more sort of like higher like more sort of black metal brilliance it's so like exhilarating in contrast to like the opening track like when you, you're just in that first two tracks you're given so many different flavors and you're like you really don't know what the album's going to be this I, I i love the way this thing unfolds man yeah i mean the thing is like you listen to sort of the first three tracks and you kind of feel like you've got a handle okay this is some sort of like chaotic blackened like deathy like really really mad but also quite gothy and quite sort of dramatic it's it's produced absolutely perfectly like you're saying the vocals really cut through really lovely like he's got a really commanding presence and in the mix and i love the way the like the bass pedal and the bass guitar really like sync up and create this really sort of snappy 
like poppy sound that works really, really well against everything else that's all a bit more liquid and a bit more like harder to grab, a bit more ephemeral. And then you get to like endless gray and endless, endless gray, gray. To me, <laughs> is almost like it's you know the bridge in, in in the third indiana jones movie where like it shifts perspective and then you can see where you're going and you're like <laughs> oh okay and it's like this sort of transitional song that's got this it's just got loads of like 70s prog and one thing that does bug me is that how you can hear the bass player just absolutely going for a walk as that fades out. I'm like, no, turn it back up again. Turn it back up again. I want to hear it because it sounds fucking wicked. But then you go into the Gardens of the Dark, Gardens in the Dark, sorry. And like that song is fucking gorgeous. Yeah. You think you've heard all the flavors an album's yeah, got. You, when you get got, through yeah, those exactly. first three, you get you get those first first three tracks, you get Endless Grey, and Endless Grey is this really cool, brilliant, soaring solo as the feels like riding a dragon made of fucking lightning. It's like it's all just brilliant and neon soaked, and you're yeah. absolutely in love with it. And then you get into fucking the what can't remember the track's called the Garden. in the Dark. Uh, Garden's in the Dark. And then this like goth rock comes in it almost yeah. like stadium danzig like it's oh, fucking mate. it's so cool man you think you've heard all the flavors you know what to expect and then you have presented with this and it's it's fucking brilliant yeah man and it's so like dramatic and like almost fucking spiritual the way that it happens it's like <laughs> almost like a fucking shaman like chanting but then he hits those like big bellowy peaks of the vocals in the kind of chorusy part and it just like stirs you inside like it's just fucking incredible the way that it does it and like really that song's very very simple if you if you kind of break it down there's probably about five chords in the whole song it's quite simple it's got a, like a single tempo and a single beat but it just hits man like it's fucking awesome and that moment and then you go into like the children that the bombs overlooked and then they kind of like blend the two ideas together. So you kind of yes. get the dissonant like black metal weirdo vibes that you get from the first passage mixed with this gothy dramatic, like stonery doomy vibe that they've worked from that last track. And it kind of all comes together and creates something like really unsettling and threatening but in a fucking incredible yeah. way and there's also that like smattering of electronics that they kind of throw in as well just to create extra texture and just to make everything feel more rich and like it's in like 4k hd quality like it's i need, I need to use less visual metaphors for talking about music but like it's like it's <laughs> so it's so incredibly like it, it just creates these images in your mind like it's got such a uh, it feels like a place rather than an album this thing like it's incredible yeah. it's absolutely incredible what i love about that trick that track is that like it feels like a dissonant psych black metal track but it's it's kind of like it's the drums song that track isn't it the drums yeah. are just absolutely going ham the whole fucking time and all the other sort of instrumentation just feels sort of like tones and like a backing performance to this to the drum the mm. drums were just and it almost feels like it's just sort of punctuated with the vocal performance it's like and and that 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 vocal performance then you it, it's got both of the characters in it's got the sort of the the wraith and then also sort of like the more like the orc the higher it's like it's got all the different flavors that, that have come before it and then we move into concrete cliffs which feel like yeah. sort of stoner and death doom coming together it's these large fuzzy melodies intersected with this like huge chomping battering and then you know it soars into the sweet sort of wailing ass fucking solo territory like yeah, the, the, the flavor from endless gray comes in and it's folded into the mix like that vibe was that vibe was far too strong for it just to be contained in Endless Grey. Endless Grey is brilliant, <laughs> but here you see the payoff, like musically and sort of uh, uh, like the way that the, the co like compositionally inside of a track, you get that payoff and yeah. oh, it's fucking fantastic. Dude. And then, and Dude. then if you, if you weren't completely satiated, by all the brilliance that's happened, we step into forest service road blues, dude. And 
here we go again, dude. Sad cowboy shit goes hard as fuck. <laughs> Wayfarer knows it. Life sick knows it. Let's fucking just get gritty and sad, homie. I'm down yeah. to clown. Fucking sad cowboy shit rules. Sad cowboy <laughs> shit. Yeah, man. Forest service road. Forest service road blues. That's what it's called, isn't it? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's like it's like if the mountains and the trees formed a band. It's like it's so earthy. <laughs> it's so like. It just has that feeling of being lost in the woods. Like it's, it's just fucking incredible. And you get to the end of this and you can hear it the first time, but every time you listen to it, you get a bit more and a bit more out of it, but you can hear it after the first time. This is going to be one of the best records that comes out this year. Like there's no way, there's no way that you, that you can deny it. It's just absolutely insanely good. It's, it's powerful. It's stirring, but it's also like, riffy and hard and aggressive and weird and fucked up and it's just it ticks every box on my list of things that i look for when i (laughs) I listen to music and it's impossible usually for that to happen but they managed to just tick them all it's absolutely insane sorry my phone went off and i was worried it might be nicola moaning at me but it's not i was worried i was getting too loud (laughs) nah man fucking interama dude I'm a I'm a convert, and um, but the only thing is, typically, as happens when you get into bands that have been around for a while, you try and look at buying some merch, and all of the good stuff's all sold out, and <laughs> that's literally that's like my only negative point that I could bring up about Interama <laughs> is that there's a couple of really cool shirts that you can't buy because they've sold out of them already, which fucking sucks. <laughs> but other than that, I'm in love fucking into Rama. Yeah. who would have thought it what a fucking incredible band what an absolutely amazing album a really cool album so many layers and so much i think you get more out of it the more you listen to it for sure it's like one of those ones that really opens up after a few listens it's just it's just fucking fantastic it's and funnily enough i think it does share a lot of dna with the next record we're going to talk about which is really interesting <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, just to... in just the way that there's a lot of, well, you know. Oh, just I, the sheer this, level right? of ideas. All, all, yeah. Let's get, yeah. Well, let's, let's get into it, man. Let's, let's talk it. about right, yeah. Let's talk Interama, about it. Interama yeah. fucking rules. Check the album out. New it's going to fucking blow your tits Friday. off. Amazing. But yeah, Full of Hell. They are Full of Hell. Four-piece grindcore band from Maryland. Um, their new album's called Coagul- uh, Coagulated Bliss. And it comes out on the 26th through closed casket activity. So Full of Hell are a band that we have definitely mentioned before, but we've never really like properly gone in on an, on one of their records on the show. And like, I think in my personal opinion, Full of Hell are a consistently very good band, but they haven't really done anything that's blown my mind apart from trumpeting ecstasy in, 20, in 2017, which is the only time when I would really say that I have I felt the level of hype that seems to be, seems to exist in the world. Am I am I mad for saying that, or do you? No, I I agree, man. I think it's um, I feel like you've kind of since that record, you've kind of known you kind of known what to expect from Full of Hell, and I don't think, and that's not because they're boring or unexciting. It's because they just they've been consistently really cool and interesting like they they're sort of like so good they're on this sort of pedestal where you're just like oh yeah new full of hell album and that's kind of what i felt like for the, yeah, kind for the of, last few records bit. you're like oh that's cool but like it was cool and it's kind still of cool a bit for sure but then the other issue that i feel like i have with full of hell is that they do they do all of these like collaborative things and like it feels like they're just kind of they get a bit carried away and they're kind of piling a bit too much on and trying really hard to to be weird and do things and you know like smash boundaries and you know it's all it's all really cool and really respectable and like really impressive and i can understand why they're revered so highly but i feel like it it, the music suffers from lacking in a bit of something to grab onto because it's all so much and so weird and there's all of these and all the collaborations and all that kind of stuff. But I tell you what, Coagulated Bliss feels to me like this is full of hell kind of going back to basics and being like, right, boys, blast beats and riffs. That's what people like, isn't it? Let's, let's really make sure that the, the staple 
the bass point in every one of our songs on this record is is blast beats and riffs and we can do like we can do low and they fucking do they fucking experiment like crazy all over this record but it really to me feels like this is them kind of cutting back a bit of the like the noise and the extra stuff that they've been throwing out their releases recently and just finding the core of the band again and i i for one i'm all for it i'm all for it this album is fucking sick <laughs> it's so yeah. good i'm i'm so down and i think it's there's this there's this sort of there's this uptake in this real sort of like punk and roll vibe that's, that's inside of this which is really cool i think it gives like the grooves like it gives the grooves a lot of the sort of footholds it gives you this yeah. real sort of like swaggy fucking vibe that you don't usually get from something like this it's like all the sort of caustic energy is there but it's sort of rock and roll tendencies are just really well, fucking brilliant the thing is right if i had a little read of the press notes and i think essentially their kind of base point where they started from with this record was what would it sound like if full of hell wrote a surf rock record that was kind <laughs> of what they were going for so obviously yeah there's a lot of that like do 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 like that sort that similar kind of idea in the kind of punk and roll scene as there is in that kind of surf rock scene and like when we talked about like eyes as a as a prime example and yeah. how they kind of fold that similar idea into what they do and how it really creates something that's really propulsive and really energetic and really fun and 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 excited and keeps you like keeps you on board and you don't get like you're always like you're always with the momentum and it's always pushing forward and it's like okay that like i was trying to figure out while we were, i was going through it which one of these tracks is my favorite and the trouble is that they it ends and you're on to the next one before you have a chance to think about it so you get to the end and you're like oh, i don't know i better start again and try and figure out which one's my favorite this time and like it just kept <laughs> happening and i was like oh i can't keep up with it like it's it's fucking brilliant absolutely brilliant and I tell you what, yeah. Dylan Walker, what a fucking monster! What a fucking uh, monster! That guy. the vocal performance is fucking. It's superb, mate. So like his, sick. his like blackened spewings are still all over the place, but there's like a real sort of warmth here, and like, mm. uh, like the energy I get from this record is like the same sort of energy like on like Grave Dancer by Pig Destroyer. That track yeah. that's just like so out of left field. It's just really sort of rocky and fucking like almost was like sort of like lamb of god in there like it's it's so fucking cool i love that that's feeding this and then i love what i was saying about how i feel like this is quite similar to the interama record is where it's really brilliant and challenging and and cool and hard but there are these different flavors that pop out throughout it like you've got um bleeding horizon the track on here which is like a real fuzzed up doomed the fuck out oh, track yeah, it's like a, it's like a big swaying six minute offering from full of hell which is yeah. so fucking cool like yeah and, you know it's cool. the, the rest the rest you know you've got these really sort of grindy moments and you've got all the staples there are full of hell but you can feel that they're trying things here they're trying to sort of give you bigger grooves and then they give you the biggest fucking groove, groove possible with this fucking big huge doom offering like <laughs> and then you go to like Gelding of Men where it's sort of back on this sort of scronky noise rock sort of rhythmic battering ram. Um, I love it. And uh, one of my favorite bits is like the, the vocals on the, on the last track. There's so much sort of fucking like fluid yeah. in those elongated really. parts. It's a, yeah. it's really, really, <laughs> really in there. Really phlegmy and, and yeah. unpleasant, but it works fucking brilliantly. And he pulls it off with such like such skill. Um, yeah, man, like, I was thinking, like, the title track, I get, like, kind of every time I die on From Parts Unknown vibes on that title track. Like, yeah. it's got that, like Big you're saying, time. that sort of rocky, that rocky nature, but inside this really fast, chaotic grindcore sound. Um, I just think that this is, this album is just, feels like them kind of not buried under the weight of their own creativity and just cutting loose and just having some fun and just making something that it feels like it was kind of, designed for mosh pits which is really cool like sometimes bands just get too arty for their own good sometimes and it's nice for this to just for the full of hell to just be like nah let's just write a fucking album full of fucking riffy bangers mate and everyone's gonna be well into it and like it's just yeah this is a really 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 sick record and like it makes me kind of want to dip back into some of the other stuff and be like was i wrong am i am i completely mad about full of hell just being a bit too arty for their own good and actually like they fucking they just rip like maybe maybe i'm being an idiot and yeah 
yeah, this is a fucking sick, sick record. Yeah, man. They, they, you know, they've proved that they're like, they are still sort of, they're, they're exceptional at producing sort of twisted and out of the, out of the box underground brilliance that they're really you know very creative and snarling and fascinating and i think this output like absolutely sort of cements their relevance as one of the sort of coolest and most forward bands out there like this is this is yeah this is like cementing the hype really absolutely i just really hope that they don't in six months do another like collaboration with the body and like completely (laughs) completely prove me right again (laughs) but this is this album i'm fucking well down with this record mate loads yeah. and loads of fun and like, bags of fun yeah absolutely sick yeah um coagulated bliss by full of hell fucking incredible record um we obviously missed loads of stuff that came out last week which we can have a little chat about for sure but um there's another record that comes out on friday which i know you haven't had a, a chance to listen to but i have listened to quite a bit and i've been really enjoying it it's called from the other side of the mirror by glassing um glassing are a band we have both definitely chatted about in like our in our real lives fairly regularly but it's not something i think we've ever we've ever brought to the show before they're a kind of post hardcore meets screamo with elements of black gaze band but this new record is fucking sick man it's definitely their best <laughs> record to date like they've added in i don't know if i guess maybe they haven't added it in maybe it's always been there but it just feels a bit more prominent on this record and that's a kind of like almost new romantic like joy division element to what's Ooh. going on coupled with this sort of old school thursday kind of post hardcore element as well but like the, the thing is they always they almost always stick to this really harsh, shrill, horrible scream. But then he also folds in these really like sad, lamentful melodies and it makes everything feel like really uplifting, but then at the same time kind of sleazy and a bit like late night, <laughs> like, and you listen to it nice. and you know, like when you listen to Deftones and you're like, God, Chino Marino has got a beautiful voice, but if I left him alone with my missus for five minutes, he'd have her away. And like, you have the same <laughs> kind of feeling where you're listening to glassing, like this guy, he's just, there's something about him. Like he's got a lovely voice, but I just, I, I don't trust him. And it just, it makes the record <laughs> feel really it really touches it really affects you man like this record is fucking gorgeous and i really strongly recommend that you when it comes out on friday you give it a a spin or two d because it's fucking awesome um the other thing is often when you talk about like black gaze and post hardcore those the band they're kind of scared of riffs aren't they they're scared to like (laughs) do something they're scared of like ruining the ambiance they're scared of like kind of cutting through and doing something chunky and heavy and glassing are not scared of that in the slightest like there's plenty of like big aggressive like math corey kind of moments but they never disturb the lovely like serenity of the vibe they just they just punch it they just kind of cut through and punch it out it's it's really really fucking cool like i listened to this album quite a lot while i was on the shinkansen going through going through Japan at 250 mile an hour or however fast that fucking train goes, it goes fucking quickly. And <laughs> 250 like, mile an hour. Yeah, mate. It, it moves. I, I might have exaggerated a bit, but it moves bloody quickly. <laughs> and like, um, the thing is, as you're like shh, zooming through Japan, you go through these crazy landscapes where it's just open and there's just fucking loads and loads of mountains. And then you're into like really built up, really metropolitan areas. And then you're into these mountains and stuff again, like the way that it, cause it's such a, like, it's like really sparse, but really heavily densely populated in kind of small, small areas in, in, in these big cities. And this record kind of moved and undulated with the surroundings that I was in. And it really, it really <laughs> made the record. I like, I don't know if like, I'm certainly if I go, you the only way you're really going to enjoy this glassing album is if you go to Japan and ride around on the train for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite quite the prerequisite. It's quite a specific requirement. It's not like oh, let's go listen to it in the woods and you'll really enjoy it, which is something we would usually say. <laughs> Going to Japan slightly more expensive, but um, but it just works so well with that kind of changing landscape because they'll sort of 
do like two or three really hard aggressive tracks and then they'll sort of go into something much more like mellow and like then there's this one song which i'm trying to remember the name of where is it where is it nominal will which is like it kind of made me think of like naughty's finch but if you replaced the the vocals with this really like harsh black metal scream like it's got this really awesome like like for me when i was like really really big into that kind of post hardcore scene like it's got that really wicked like almost almost fun like joyous it could be like a hundred reasons song or something but it just with their with their own take on the vocal and then there's like the song ritualist which feels like you're being chased by the ghost of a t-rex or something like it's so sort of stalking (laughs) and menacing and it's got like loads of australasia by pelican which for my money is one of the best like instrumental post-metal records that there's ever been and it's just there's just so much and like the last track wake made me think of like the first alexis on fire album like a song like pulmonary archery where you've got that kind of like the way that they kind of build up these tapping guitar parts and the kind of the triumph and the sadness that you get all at the same time like this glassing record mate is is absolutely wonderful and i really strongly recommend that people go out there and check it out when it comes out on friday it's coming out through pelagic records i believe and yeah it's 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 sinister it's beautiful and it's aggressive in really lovely equal measures and really well balanced it's it's a bloody great record uh from the other side of the mirror yeah it comes out on friday make sure you fucking listen to it talking of pelagic records yeah june june, june literally sounds like it should have been on pelagic <laughs> june mate how fucking this fucking yeah. june record this june record is absolutely wicked like i love this band but it feels to me on this new record they might have got heavier am i right do you agree whoa i was gonna say i feel like they're sort of more melodic they're more the the singing i think it's uh, the um the song and the and the screamed vocal is sort of percent like the the percentages have shifted slightly but it's it's still fucking massive and heavy and brilliant it's there when it's needed to it's sort of there as a tool rather than as like the sort of the the standard fare but fuck me the the singing on this record is absolutely fucking gorgeous mate that eleonora track man oh mate that's like it's just hitting me in all the fucking tools like it's like (laughs) tall and like brilliant hench post metal colliding just to deliver this gorgeous convergence of just melody and vocal aptitude and just like almost like dance ability like this whole record um this whole record is gorgeous and it feels like it's been, you know, it's, it's like a band writing for the stages that they want to play. And yeah. if that's true, they just, they need to be playing like outside. I need to just be smashing beers to every time I listen to this record in a fucking, <laughs> in a big, in a big sea of people. In a gigantic like, field. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. I feel like there's been a, like, a real sort of melodic uptake. It's always been there, but I feel like it's hmm. much at the forefront of the forefront of this record. And it's fucking brilliant. Yeah, I can, like, when I say it's heavier, like, I think it's just, like, more focus on big, chunky riffs. And, like, they don't spend as much time kind of building up to stuff as they previously did. They're much more no. like, let's just jump straight in with the fucking big, sick riff. And, like, you know, we can kind of simmer it down a bit later on. But what we're going to really, what's really going to dominate, and I think it's that, like you're saying, with the whole, like, writing songs for the stages that you're on it's just making something that's more sort of forceful rather than heavy heavy is probably the wrong word something that's more yeah forceful more powerful more like in in like immediately impactful than yeah than the previous record which is a fucking incredible record still but has has to kind of you have to kind of live with and you have to kind of work it out you have to spend a bit of time getting used to it whereas this new one I think just locks in pretty much straight away. Like first listen, I was like, right, that's an absolute banger. That's an absolute fucking yeah. gold level banger. I feel like they've just become better songwriters. Like these, yeah. these, yeah, yeah. these things, they, they sound bigger. They feel like they go further. Like it's just absolutely massive. And like, some of the vocals sound like fucking like Maynard and Brandon Boyd had a little baby, dude. It's, there's some <laughs> yeah, points the in this record. A lot stronger. And, like the actual performance oh, of the melodies is a lot stronger on this one than the last one. 
Yeah, and there's some moments on this record, like the 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 groove they build it build up to and explode into at the end of Samarte. Mm, like, yeah. it's it's so gorgeous, and it feels like it, that moment could have gone on for three minutes. Like, had other people written it, but it's quite sort of fleeting. But it's such a commanding groove. You like can't wait to trudge back through the hour or, or like another hour of this record to get round to that point because yeah, it's a yeah. big, it's a big chunky it's boy, big mate. Boy. It's, it's, yeah, it's a big. You know, it's 50, it's 58 minutes but fuck me and also the the riff that opens abode the abode the perfect soul that riff that is that was specifically forged for us to just be necking shants in the sunshine <laughs> just shanting down all night all day long yeah it's a it's a festival level record for sure and yeah i mean june the, i i I believe they. I mean, their last album got them so much more like hype. Hype sounds. I, I, I'd probably say more respect. Like I think hype sounds fleeting and sounds kind of like it's been like what's the word uh, manufactured rather than actually like natural. But I feel like their last record really got their band a lot more sort of respect and notoriety in the scene. And they've. This is the perfect record to release off the back of the situation that they find themselves in having built up so much love off of that last record. And yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. wish it on a better band, mate. Fucking incredible. Um, this is right up there with like, this is, this got to be on the top list of Scottish exports. Like, Oh yeah. It's got to be, sure. this is right up there. <laughs> like Iron Brew, Buck First. Yeah. The right June up record. there with Aberdeen Angus Steak, mate. This is fucking <laughs> <laughs> too fucking right. Um, the other one that I wanted to talk about that came out last week is the new Atre Billis record. Have you noticed I'm wearing my Atre Billis t-shirt? Just to, wrap, just to wrap them up. Cause they just released a new record through 20 bucks bin called Apex Apian and it's no that's this one isn't it what's the new one called i've had a mare there anyway whatever <laughs> <laughs> that's what this record is called eh? that's that record, mate. the new record's called something different but it's fucking well good and like <laughs> the new record's know. called something different <laughs> i don't know how much i don't know how please look out for me while i talk it's called or it's called or Ormicide, thank you, thank you. Now I feel really, really silly. But yeah, this I think this record is like they've what they've they've kind of improved on their approach to like progressiveness and like it's much less it's much more like I don't know, I can't even I can't even really articulate why it's better than the last record. Like they're just fucking a banging banging band, but I genuinely believe <laughs> that like, I wanted to listen to this album more than I did because I was like on the way home I'm just going to listen to loads and loads of tunes and then I got on the plane and I was like I'm fucking knackered. I can't listen to Atre Billis because I want to try and fall asleep. And that's never going to happen if I listen to this Atre Billis record. But like they've just just thrown themselves into groove, they've thrown themselves into just being more aggressive and like more immediate and like it's still got that horrible like, like vocal that was there at the last one that was really impenetrable and aggressive just to make sure that you don't forget that they you know they're child children of the old school and they love proper death metal but they just put together an absolutely fucking incredible new record and i would love it if they came to the uk i'd really like to see them perform i think they'd be absolutely incredible live yeah man they fucking rule Atropolis they do this they do such brilliant sort of technical excellence it's always yeah. brutal it's dissonant it's interesting um, I did. I do wish that I had more to say about it because I really like that band and I need to just get on it and, and jam it but um, I'm yeah, glad I that mean, you shout it out brother Replicant's been rules. kind of like distracting in a way hasn't <laughs> it in that, in that sense because if I'm reaching for this kind of music so far this year I have been reaching for the Replicant record but like this Atre Billis record is also fucking wonderful. It's just that Rep yeah. can just kind of have just kind of imp like just kind of created a barrier in my mind that I can't see past. So yeah. unfortunately. It's been, a, it's been a fucking fantastic time for dissonant music, man. It There's has, been so many it? cool it records has. like this that have come out. Like it's and you know, you've got we've still got Ulcerate to come. Can't fucking wait for that. I've oh, been dude. I've been so excited for the Ulcerate record. I've just been going back over the old stuff loads and just that's sort of been my go-to recently it's been that and crippling alcoholism it's just yeah, still sort of got got a hold of me very very oh, tightly you know what else got announced this week as well don't you the stabbers mate stabbers. The fucking big stabs yes 28th of june new 200 stab wounds record 
cannot yeah. fucking wait for that shit. Hell yeah. They put out a new, a new single as well, didn't they? Which I think was one of the ones that they played when they were touring yes. the old uh, Cattle Decap. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking, fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. awesome. And it's in, on recording, it's just as awesome. Maybe, maybe, well, no, it's probably not better. Probably not more awesome than live, but. Even more better. I can't fucking wait to hear a new 200 Stab Wounds album. I'm yeah. very, That's... very excited. That that and ulcerator just top of the top of the yeah. hype pile for me. I can't fucking wait. Um, I also wanted to chat and shout out uh, the Antichrist Siege Machine record machine machine Antichrist <laughs> Siege Machine. Um, so they're a band that have been on my radar since their previous record, uh, which came out in 2021, called Purifying Blade. Um, so they play a style which is sort of known as war metal, which is kind of like raw black metal infused with grindcore it's like everything extreme everything hard as fuck it's just the (laughs) the sensibilities of those two sort of genres put together and just they just create this snarling exercise in extremity it is it's fucking it's an absolute whirlwind um another band that i really enjoyed that kind of have a similar style is a band called concrete winds um if you enjoyed anything by them then you're going to absolutely love the antichrist siege machine record it's 25 minutes and it's got a snare that will put your fucking windows out it's fucking (laughs) brilliant like every every cacophony is executed with a pint of fucking bile a true sort of yearning to assault and defile and eviscerate it's just everything is just turned up to 10 it's fucking going absolutely ham um and what's funny is there's some parts of this record that almost come off in a similar vein um to candy right which is a weird comparison oh, yeah. but these heinous grating textures combining with this stompy hardcore sort of motion um they sort of reach the same place from two different directions which is quite funny um they then there's like there's more sort of like death metal moments throughout the record this sort of like death metal soundscape but they're sort of bestial eruptions still keep it well in line with their primary objective of tearing your fucking head off um there's some you know abyssal hate as a really cool sort of death metal two-step riff which fucking rules um it's brilliant the the artwork's hard as fuck it's like it's like a i think it's the da- the devil devouring jesus which is cool it's got that sort of <laughs> pulling of flesh which is like similar to that saturn devouring his son painting which kind of just it's just superb brilliant hard shit like if if ladbrooks took like sick bets like hardest black metal adjacent <laughs> record of 2024 instead of rubbish bets like who's going to cook a kick a ball really well like <laughs> we'd all be down there emptying our fucking piggy banks and betting on the antichrist siege machine because it's a fucking absolute slice of noise it's it's hard as fuck it's 25 minutes and you need to dedicate at least 25 minutes of your life to antichrist siege machine if you enjoyed the extreme offerings of uh vitriol this year um you should absolutely check this record out it's it's sort of out in its own ballpark and it's out in the own its own ballpark sort of kicking around half eaten heads and having a whale of a time <laughs> I, I i really fucking like it I, it's so aggressive I haven't had a chance to listen to this one, but I sounds like I really need to do something about that. So I will. I absolutely will. Trust me. And I love that album Double cover. Hard. You are not joking about this album cover. It's, <laughs> it's, well it's so good. fucking hard, mate. It's I love well it. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that came out last week as well, but just wanted to shout it out because obviously we had a little breaky poos because Gary was in the old Japan. Yes, I was. Uh, I was not in the country, and so we missed out on an episode last week of just three solid gold bangers. So, yeah, fucking sick, mate. Awesome. I've had a fucking. I've had a great time. It's nice to be back. Nice to be chatting riffs. Nice, nice to be uh, discussing how fucking incredible the Inter Armour album is, and I've been loving that one. Um, next week. I should have probably Next this up before week. I started bringing it up next week on the show. Talking about, <laughs> oh, hello, Terminal Nation. Ho, ho, ho. Ooh, yes, yeah, that's fucking so, yeah. double Ooh. hard. Double hard. Mate, there's some double oh, yeah. hard business so coming down we'll the pike. 
We'll see you then, motherfuckers. Bye. Love you lots. Bye-bye.